am I? My name is Rogelio J. Samore. If you can't pronounce my first name, I go by Ro. Uh, I am a solutions barista over at HashRocket. I have been a Linux sysadmin, a software engineer, and tall for a longish time. So follow me at the Ruby Mug. Email me. Check out my five blog posts. They're very, 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 very re relevant to what we're doing. And um, that's my GitHub. I have, uh, and that's it for me. So I want to have your attention. Feast your eyes on this. Medium turkey chili. <laughs> Medium crab bisque. You didn't get any bread. Just forget it, let it go. <laughs> um, excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> No soup for you. <laughs> so no soup for you. You may be wondering what that clip had to do with this talk. Absolutely nothing. So there we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ta-da. Um, however, I do have, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what our mission, what today's mission is. You ready? No pseudo, the final frontier. To explore a near perfect development environment. To seek out cases for pseudo. To boldly go where no developer has gone before. Not really, but it sounded good. Um, you may learn some other things along the way. But first, let's just jump in. Pseudo does have its place, right? Um, in mostly in multi-user environments, it allows for logging. So let me just show you a couple of commands. So this is sudo MySQL status. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. And that's su. So you're you're just running this, you know, as a user logged in, and then you're running sudo, and then you're just as that user, you're just running that the su, and then running that command. The difference is, as you'll see, when you run sudo, it says, this was the user. It, you run it as root, and then that's the command over there. When you run it here, it just says that the user, fry, ran a command. We don't know what. So I mean, it does have its place. It's not, it's not bad. Um, so there's nothing really wrong with sudo itself. And it's really used to install trustworthy tools. Um, so why no sudo? Well, part of the problem is, as you know, most of us use either OS X or Ubuntu, you know, or some something like that. Ubuntu especially. And what happens is they have a weak, or no, they don't. They don't. Uh, they don't say set a default password for root, which forces us to use sudo on potentially weak passwords, right? And sudo can potentially wreak havoc in your box. Um, it also installs, well, let me just camp on this one for a second. Say there's a make file that rm-rf is your stuff, and you sudo make, in, uh, make install that, and then you're very much in trouble. And I, I guess it's stuff that, you, if you're going to use sudo to install trustworthy tools, it's fine. but you know, in, in our case, it doesn't really make sense. Again, sudo installs gems under your system Ruby, which we'll see it doesn't really work with if you're using RVM, which is a key part of this. It's also not ide ideal for homebrew, you know, S10. So, and, and I think about, uh, I don't know, 50%, 60, 70, 70% of people are on OS10. So great. All right. 
So here it is. Debian and Ubuntu folks have uh, apt. Uh, Gen 2 peeps have Portage, which is pretty awesome. I love Portage, by the way. Mac OS 10 dudes, nothing. Pure crap. That's what I think. Nothing until Homebrew came along to save the day. Uh, it is truly the missing package manager for OS 10. And I'll give you a brief synopsis. And I'm not going to go into how to install it. I'm just going to, you know, gloss over it for, for, for the purposes of expediency. Um, are there instructions on how to do that? Yes, there are instructions. And by the way, if you have a question just like Jim did, go ahead and interrupt me in the middle of my talk. I don't care. Um, it's, you know, so there is uh, there's time for that now. We, we don't have to wait until the end. So there is, there, there is instructions on how to set up exactly what you'll see, the demo that I'll show you here. It's on my blog, blog.derimug.com. And there's ins uh, instructions for both Ubuntu and Debian and for OS X. So um, homebrew. It, I install it under user local, which you know, kind of the best way to do that is to see, uh, change the ownership of user local to your developer username. And the reason is, this is my tool. This is how, this is my crap. This is what I use. So it doesn't matter. I mean, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be. First of all, user local, when you install OS X, uh, it's empty. So if you have a, 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 an empty install, then just you know, change the ownership for that and, and install it there. And then you can install everything from Postgres to, uh, as we'll see here. Uh, so for, for Debian, you have curl, bison, the build essential stuff. Um, for OS X, you need Xcode and Homebrew, which will give you Vim or MacVim. You can now brew install MacVim. Uh, Firefox and Chrome, you'll need that. MySQL, Postgres, and or SQLite, or wget, proc tools. All these things you can install with Homebrew. Stuff that you, get, you take for granted in Debian, right, and, and Ubuntu that are just there. Nmap, uh, you name it. There, those things are uh, available to you in formulas and Homebrew. And uh, it allows you to, if it's not there, it allows you to write Ruby code to install new formulas for whatever it is. And it's all compiled. And it uses Xcode, so it doesn't have to re-download all this stuff that Mac ports um, did. So all this is kind of coming to a head when I, because the biggest thing that, um, that I am I've encountered to install in my Ruby environment to make my life easier is my friend, RVM. And RVM is, stands for Ruby Version Manager. It's a command line tool. It installs multiple Ruby interpreters and versions of that um, interpreter. Um, it, manages, it manages sets of gems per Ruby version, performs operations over installed interpreters and gem sets. And <clears throat> this is the biggest part, gem isolation on a per project basis, right? So you have gem sets. And I'm going to show you all this. So I'm just going to get into the meat with all this stuff. You can have a per project RVMRC. And you can have also, once you start developing, and I'll show you this too, a single command to run your specs against. So you can say, I want to run my command. I want to run my, my test against 186, REE, 192, JRuby, whatever you want. Um, and it also gives you the flexibility to say, oops, I messed up. I'm going to start over. And with the help of gem sets and bundler, I think you're, you're, you're back up and running in five seconds. So um, are there any questions so far? Cool. I'm going to do the live coding. So you guys ready? All right. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, so hitch is my, um, my little gem command line tool that allows me to uh, pair with people. Uh, I use op option parse. If you're here for the command line tool stuff, I use option parse for that stuff. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, run rake. Everything passes. And 
RVM has this thing called RVM info. And you'll notice under gem home here that I'm running that it's in the gem set called hitch. And how I got there is by saying there is a file here, sorry, pi.rvm, rvmrc. And this file says, it says it's flag. So if you say rvm use, rvm gem set use hitch, if it doesn't exist, it'll create it for you. But now you're on that gem set, OK? Uh, now, now I'm going to run that command I was telling you about, not that one, uh, this one. So if you see, it's running with 186, uh, RE 187, and then 192, and they all pass. Great. That's awesome. But now, let's say I want to add, uh, I got an, a, an issue that somebody wanted to, so, so let me show you what it, what it does right now. So I say hitch, uh, the Ruby mug, that's my GitHub name, and tpope, which is tpope's name. Let's say he was here, but he's not. Uh, and then we're hitched. Now the commit messages are going to show me, my full name and his name, uh, dev plus the Ruby mug at tpope and hashtag. I don't know if most of you may not be familiar with this. If you're pair, pair programming, this is a great way to have author attribution for the pair and not just one person. Uh, I'll just do a, a, a local commit so you see what I'm talking about. You'll see that the author shows up there. And so here I'm going to say, you know, change spec ops, whatever. Doesn't matter. And now when I say git log dash dash pretty equals full, you'll see that the committer is still me, because that's my local computer. But the author is tpope and I, which is false. So well, whatever, for the purpose of this exercise, I just wanted to show you what it does. I got an issue. Somebody wanted to add, well, what if we're doing a trio? I was like, that's fine. If you do a trio, we can say hitch, you know, and then I can say, Jim, what's your uh, big tiger? And it doesn't know it doesn't know who big tiger is. So I'm going to say, do I want to add it to hitch pairs? I say yes. Say Jim Remsick. And then cool. Now you have Jim Remsick and Rogelio J. Samur and Tipo. And what this dude wanted to do is he wanted to say Jim Remsick comma Rogelio J. Samur comma and Tipo. And I was like, that's fine. So I'm not going to add the whole feature today, but I want to add like the first step of that feature that's unhitched, just to make sure we're cool. And now, wait, let me run that again. What this does, all, all this is doing is it's exporting this, these two things that uh, Git uses before you commit. And unhitch just unsets those variables. But it also, as you saw, it keeps track of who you paired in the past. So anyway, uh, let me unhitch right quick. And then run that again. Of course, it's empty. And now let's open up uh, this little guy uh, or this little guy. And, and uh, you can see down here, I'm, the first thing that I think we want to do is let's open the, this is the the spec for the hitch, the main hitch library. So I'm going to add a, I'm going to, how's that? That's good? Cool. So we're going to call this one uh, number of pairs. This, this method is going to very, it's a very simple method. Uh, oh. Right? In this method, it's, it returns the number of pairs. Right? So we're going we're gonna to say hitch dot current pair 
this one. All right, cool. That's that's my setup. And then so when I call it, number of pairs should equal to very simple, right? Bear with me here. I know this is boring. Uh, so now let's run the test. It's going to say there's no method. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let's add a method here. We're going to call it number of pairs. Right? And it's going to say current pair dot count. Because that sounds cool. And that is going to make it pass. Right? Very simple. Cool. I'm ready to push this. So now I'm going to say, wow, man, I want to make sure that this works on 192, 186. And of course, it should, there's no reason why it shouldn't. So you run it. Oh, crap. It didn't work for 186. It worked for, one, for REE, and it worked for, for 192. And the reason why it didn't work for 186 is a simple reason. And that's because array didn't have count in 186. It only had size. Of course, to make my code work for everything, for every, every version going back to 186, I simply change that to size, come back here, and run my stuff, and everything passes. And that, my friends, is the power of gem sets and being able to say, to, to isolate all your stuff and, and run your library and all your tests against different versions of Ruby. Um, cool. Any questions? Did you have to install the different gems in a different VM? Yes, I was, I'm about to show you how I got to this point uh, right now. So if anybody else doesn't have any more questions, I'm going to jump right into that. So how did I get here? Um, if we say Ruby, I mean, is this is this font too small for this? Okay. All right. So, so if I say Ruby dash v, it says I'm right now in REE. So if I wanted to say I want to go to, and again I'm in R, RVM. So I'm going to say gem list, and it shows me the stuff that's installed. I'm going to say RVM gem set empty. Hitch. It's going to prompt me, are you sure? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. Cool. Gem list. There should only be one or two gems installed. And these are the, th these four guys are installed in the global gem set. So every Ruby version has a global gem set. And, it ha and you can have n number of gem sets within that. But there's always a global one that's shared among all of them. All right? So now, since I have Bundler installed, all I will have to say, well, since I have Bundler, I can just, the only thing I will have, the only gem I will have to install is install Bundler uh, pre. And hopefully the internet will be nice to me. Thank you. And then I just do bundle install. And again, do a gem list. And this Bundler is actually part of this one. And I say, Bundle, install, oh, two else, how about that? And the thing about the, the newest bundler, you don't need to do relock. It automatically relocks your gem file. Uh, oh, it, it's deleting it, so we ignore that. And not, right now it's going out and looking at my gem file. And I mean, are most of you guys familiar with bundler? Yes? Two, three, four of you? Five? Most of you? Great. Um, so how about them Yankees? <laughs> pretty cool. Doing pretty good this year. Come on. Rangers, that's right. I'm in Texas. I forget this. Uh, that's right. So there you go. So now I say gem list, and all my stuff is there. And I say RVM info. Oh, you know what? 
yeah, our VM info. And yeah, I was, the bundle path is hitch, and the gem home is hitch. So all that stuff got installed on my hitch gem set. Um, and I pretty much had to do the same thing for 186. And then you can, you can do this little trick to, to, to switch over to, to that gem set. So now I say RVM info. And now it's going to say 186. And then if you see this, it kind of wrapped around, but it's hitch. So now I can, I can empty this one. And I basically did this for all three versions. So I did 186. I gem install bundler, then uh, pre, and then bundle install on that gem set and all three of them so that I was able to then do uh, the one, this command, so that I could run that without any hitch, no pun intended. Uh, so there you go. Am I, am I, or, so, so what? Sure. Uh, that is the command right there. You see it? Is it too? Yeah. So if I had a little pointer, I could show you. But I have a pointer here. It's called a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. So that's the first version separated by comma. So uh, 186 at hitch, R E E at, you know, hitch. And, and, and you can see which, which ones are installed on your RVM by doing that number. Uh, one per, per Ruby version, yeah. It, so every version, as, as you saw, so let me just create a new one. Actually, you can just say use because I have that flagged. We're going to call it LSRC. So now we're using this gem set. And so if I say gem list, it's empty, completely empty. So if I say gem install bundler dash dash pre, and then bundle install, that is going to do exactly what I did earlier, but for this particular version of, of Ruby, which is 186. So, yeah. Why when you created that second gem set for the complete set, shouldn't there have been the first global bundle as well? Um, the rate, the higher back and the... Yeah, I think because it, when you create the gem set and you, you, you create it and you use it, some RVM, by the way, RVM, if you're using RVM, RV, remember this command, RVM update dash dash head and run that command every day if you can. Because uh, Wayne updates this stuff. I mean, there's a bug and he fixes it you know, quickly, super, super. Uh, he's like on target with that stuff. And uh, Yehuda found a crazy bug with, sea with the seashell and, and this stuff. And, and then he fixed it pretty much almost immediately. So uh, this is taking a while, I guess, because uh, so all you guys are downloading stuff from torrents over there. What's up? Because <laughs> oh, you're all right. That's right. That's great. Uh, what's that? So is this a, a, a display issue then? Uh, no, it's actually an environment issue. Uh, if I were to open right now as we're talking this, and then I do my uh, HCD is basically the dot matrix thing. I'll, I'll, once you, if you look at my blog post, you'll see what it means. Uh, see, it's using hitch, so. Actually, let me do this. Let me change this to LSRC. Save that, CD, and then CD dash. So now we're using LSRC, but you know what? It's already installing liar. <laughs> 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 there it is. That's the global. It's still installing the stuff in the other one. But, um, but it was just a, a matter of, because the, 
the RVM stuff hadn't been had it had not been resourced, resourced, it the environment was was kind of still in like an empty limbo. But again, nothing a new terminal can't fix. I see a lot of puzzled looks questions. Yeah, yeah, for project, at least for project, right? And, 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 and if I have several versions. See, in, normally if you're doing rail stuff, you're not going to have, you're not going to be coding against different versions of Ruby. Unless you have like, like your deployment, your production is 187, RE or whatever, right? And you want to see, you want to make sure that your tests are all running against 192 because that's the, you know, the ultimate goal for now, 19. That's where you want to go because it's faster. So that maybe then you'll have to, you'll, you'll be running it, you're running your test against the one, the RE gem set and the 192 gem set. Um, in this particular case, it's a gem, so I want to make sure that it works with 186, 187, 192, because, you know, uh, you want to make sure that it just works, because, especially if you're using RVM. Uh, and hitch is something that that um, gets run pretty much every time I open a new uh, window. So if I say and then I open a new window, that needs to be ready to go in whatever version I'm running it in. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to install hitch, that you install it in the global gem set of every Ruby version that you're going to be using. Especially your default Ruby version. So, am I early? Is it uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Ta da! Is Mondo here? He's not, huh? That guy. So, there you go. This gem set, sorry. This is the LSRC gem set. And I just populated it just like that. So. And then for, if you have a gem set across Ruby versions, you have to bundle install them. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Right, as a matter of fact, the gem file for this guy, uh, see, actually it got fixed. Ruby debug got fixed for 192, as you, just like yesterday. Yeah, today maybe, or maybe yesterday, late night. So I had a little uh, unless here, unless it's 187. So don't install the Ruby debug because it wasn't working yet, so it was you know, messing everything up. So. Questions? Comments? That's it. That's all I got. Oh, uh, I did want to show you uh, wherever the mouse is. If you um, go to blog. Uh, actually, I have a hitch dealio here, but uh, I have the Snow Leopard edition and the Debian edition of what I just talked about on my blog, step by step. And ideally, what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to tell you, so I'm going to have to do it now, uh, is a, okay, Atmos, I don't know if most of you guys know Donahoe. Uh, Corey Donahoe used to work at NGR Networks at GitHub. He, he created a, a thing called a gem called Cider. And he basically took all these steps and some steps that he already had and put them into chef recipes and hosted them somewhere. 
and then you pretty much are now able to run CIDR and install you know, what he had. What I wanted to do is take that a step further and say, you go in and you say, I want to I wanna uninstall Macports. That's a chef recipe. I want to do this, 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 this. And you, you, you select what recipes you want to use. And it follows pretty much this. And then it does that. And it installs it the first time. And if you run it again, it updates everything else, right? So it'll update all your formulas, formulae, formulas, whatever. And uh, keep your stuff up to date. Even for OS X, there is a uh, software update uh, command line tool that you can run. So you don't have to even worry about messing with the stuff that when it runs here. You can have that chef recipe take care of that and run all your OS X updates from it. So for real now, thanks for listening. That's all I got.